when you're trauma bonded, what you can do to help yourself and how you can help yourself through the most incredibly painful and difficult ordeal in life of dealing with breaking those trauma bonds and getting yourself free from a toxic person, free from the pain that's caused by the relationship and also the pain that's caused by wanting to go back to something you know isn't good for you and the, and the confusion that's related to it and all of that. Sort of some steps to maybe start working toward releasing the horrible feelings, the horrible grips of trauma bonding. The number one thing that helps when you're trauma bonded, and everyone will tell you this, and it's not what you're going to want to hear, is going no contact. If you can't go no contact, go low contact. And by low contact, it means need to know information only based on the reason you have to have contact with that toxic person. You're going to get all kinds of stuff back if you're low contact. You're low contact, say you have a child together. You're low contact, you're trauma bonded. You're like, I hate them, but I want them. I can't stand them, but I want them back. I don't even want them, but I want to know what they're doing and why they're doing it. And I want to understand them. You can't let go of the thinking about them when we're trauma bonded. Okay. So if you're low contact, every time you have interaction with them, it reignites these trauma bonds. It brings you right back into the cycle of thinking about them and not about your own life. It, it, it re-entangles you with these trauma bonds. So no contact, obviously, if you can, is the best way. Blocking, completely removing this person from your life. When you can't, because it's low contact, say you say something about your child like they need to be picked up from school early on Thursday for a dentist appointment. That's your day, just letting you know. They will respond often with either guilt tripping about well, how you treated them, about how they treated you. They'll bring you back to the relationship with them. They won't just say, got it, Thursday, 2.30, bam, done, right? They won't just reply to the thing. They will give you all kinds of hoovering all over the place in the form of guilting you, criticizing you, shaming you, um, blaming you, or love bombing you apologizing, trying to get you to be pretend be their friend, right? They'll do things like that that draw you back in. So when you got that going on in low contact, take a second before you reply. Look at what you wrote or what they wrote. Find the actual question in it that pertains to the child only. If there is nothing to reply to, don't reply. If there is something to reply to related to the child only, without any emotional response, answer that question only. Let the rest go. This helps you break these trauma bonds. This helps you disentangle from them having any importance in your emotional life. All right. So that's one tip if you have to stay low contact. But know that breaking these trauma bonds just in general, it takes a leap of faith and trust in yourself that you can get through this. Look to others who have been through it. Look to others who have all over the place, but really you've got someone right here who's been through it, that has done it, that no longer feels it and know that it's possible. Take that leap of faith. It is literally an act of bravery that gets you from the feelings of terrible gripping trauma bonds to being ready to work on it and move through it. Okay. And sometimes it takes a final blow, meaning hopefully not a real one, I don't want that, but sometimes it takes the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, right? The the one thing that narcissist does, toxic person, whatever they are, does that gets you to see they are not who they claimed to be. And I don't want anything to do with that. I am done, right? And sometimes it takes a while to get there. So have not only does it take those leaps of faith and those acts of bravery, sometimes it takes patience with patience with yourself to get to the point of being ready to let go, to get to the point of being ready to see them for who they are, to accept what they are, to accept that they are literally what they are and they're nothing different. They're not the fantasy in your head of what you thought they were. It's not easy to get to this place for a lot of people. Some people get stuck in this very beginning of breaking trauma bonds and just be gentle and kind to yourself if you need help on this. Please reach out, get in the support groups, either free groups on Facebook with our span groups or check it out, the group page on Queen Being. We have all kinds of types of support out there, various kinds of support. If you need to talk to someone, we are here if you need it. 
there's also group coaching if you need it. It is awesome for this type of thing uh, because you have others going through it with you. Okay. So just know that if you're in this beginning of like, I don't even, I can't even start. I can't, I can't, I can't let go. I can't, I'm not ready to let go. So there's lots of people there with you and then their own struggles and um, it's possible. Okay. It's possible to get through it. One thing, way you're trying to break these trauma bonds, uh, acceptance that this relationship is, was toxic acceptance. That means, yep. That's it. Yep. That doesn't mean judging it yourself. That doesn't mean trying to reason with it. That doesn't mean understanding why it was toxic. It is pure acceptance. Sure, we need to understand the whys and whatnot, but we some people get really stuck in the why. I have to tell more people in coaching than not, stop asking why. You know why. You know why. The why is keeping you there. Stop asking why and ask what what and ask what now. Ask, you know, depending on the situation. But doubt is gonna creep in and you're gonna often have conflicted what's called cognitive dissonance feelings. You're going to have amnesia sort of from it and not remember all the bad things. It's going to leave. This is normal. Acceptance that it was toxic because you can look at the patterns. This is why we suggest writing down a list of all the things the person did that hurt you. It's not because we want you to have like a SH mood list, right? We want you to have a list that reminds you, oh, yeah, this was toxic. It really, truly was. It's self-validating, external validation coming from the internal place of you to yourself to remind you to accept that this was a toxic relationship. Number two, which should be number one or could be number two, these two go hand in hand, hand in hand for competing for first place, <laughs> self-care. Okay. Self-care, we forget how, we don't know how, we never learn how, whatever it is, it goes out the window the second we get depressed, the second we get sad, the second we get hurt, all of that. Self-care is difficult for a lot of us, okay? So some ideas, quick ideas. Nap, go ahead, you're tired after this experience, take a nap. Cry, yep, crying can be self-care. Eat, just eat what you want. You know, don't eat to excess or whatever, but just Take care of your body is what I'm saying. Nourish yourself. Talk it through with people. Talk talk to yourself. Talk into a recording and hear yourself saying these things that are hurting you. Go for a walk. Cuddle a pet or a stuffed animal or a pillow or yourself or a friend that is safe or a, a sister or a brother that gives you a hug. Whatever it is, if you have no one to do that, do it for yourself. Cuddling, touch, pet a pet. Um, scream into a pillow, <laughs> anything. What I like to have areas that are safe from bad feelings, like the shower, a nice hot shower, where you can just close your eyes and feel the water and don't allow the negative thoughts in that shower. It's a safe place, right? Or, you know, go on a walk and cry at the same time. Feels good. Anyway, find whatever it is that is self-care to you. And by that, I don't mean go get a manicure unless that is like the best thing in the world for you. I mean, find these little details throughout your day, okay? Appreciate yourself. Appreciate the things you do for yourself. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, so number three, <clears throat> this is a form of self-care, but it is specific. Feel what you need to feel and allow the grief. Here we are allowing again and accepting, okay? You got to nurture yourself through this. Figure out what nurtures you. Figure out, if, even if it's just, I like the smell of lavender okay. That's a good one. I like hot cocoa. Have the hot cocoa. Whatever. Give yourself some nurturing while you are grieving. The acceptance and the allowance of what you feel. We hide from our feelings with the whys, with the I don't understands, with the how could someone be that way. We have to just accept it. They are that way. Okay. They're that way because their brains do not have the gray matter in the part of the brain that fires off when empathy and compassion are triggered and therefore they have no empathy and therefore they are the way they are so there's your why okay that's there is no other that's they are that way and you do feel what you feel 
And, and it's okay. You're going to have conflicting feelings all over the place. Just write them out, write them through. Okay. Number four, when you're trauma bonded, journal and get it out. If you are not in a position to be able to journal, find someone to talk to. Um, if you don't like journaling, you know, maybe talk into a voice recording or just getting it out, writing a letter and burning it. Um, whatever you need to do to get it out of you, to, to be heard, even if it's only being heard on paper, right? Find support. Number five here, find support. It's important. Okay. Having people on your side, having people that got your back, that know what you've been through, who've been there. So like, on Facebook, our Spanily uh, Facebook page, um, we've got several of those. We've got them for adult uh, children of narcissists. We've got them for parenting, co-parenting with a narcissist. We've got it for the general group, which is really big and huge. <laughs> and we're all over there. So um, you can find me over there and I'll chat with you if you need it. So um, finding coaching or a therapist you can have two different experiences between coaching and therapy, and we can do another video on what the differences might be. But um, it's basically with coaching, you got someone who's been there, walked through it, and has training and how to help you, has some trauma training, has some hopefully find someone safe, find someone you trust, uh, someone that resonates with you that, that you feel like can get you, okay? Because it's important to be heard and as an individual, right? Um, therapist, same thing. Um, it can take trial and error to find someone who gets this stuff, but keep keep looking because they're out there. Validation, find the validation. You know, sometimes turning to friends, you're not going to find the validation. That's the problem. And that's why I'm suggesting these other means, okay? Because we need the validation and the understanding. It's super important. Number six, just know it gets better. You guys, it gets better, okay? I'm not still trauma bonded. It's gone. Not, not at all. Could care less. Could care less. Okay. For real. It goes away. It he you heal from this as you move through it. And, and it, it did take a lot of introspection of allowing of the stuff I'm telling you I did. Okay. So it's not like I'm, I'm telling you stuff I wouldn't try. And there's other things too that I haven't thought of. Right. But these are, this is what I see work for people and it's not an overnight fix to be patient and know it can get better. Um, Bringing your focus, this is important, bringing your focus back to your path, your life, yourself, your direction, you to build a life outside of a life with that person, even if you're still with them. So you can't get out for whatever reason and you have to stay in this situation. Say they are an aging parent and you are taking care of them and you're like, I can't, I, I have to be here. Find as much of your life going towards your own self, your own thoughts, your own joys, wants, desires, whatever it is, build as much as your life as possible. Learning to be present to yourself through meditation, through whatever it is, a means of being present and mindful. Okay, that can help. Exercise, find an exercise routine that makes you feel good, whatever it is for you, everyone's different. And exercise can help increase the serotonin, raise your serotonin. It can help lower your cortisol. It can help bring order and discipline to your life that you may need when things are a little crazy and out of control. Um, and it can give you direction towards your own health. Okay. So, um, other ideas, like if you don't know what to do, look for classes, look for groups, look for interest groups, find a hobby, look for vacation ideas, go travel, travel in your mind. If you can't travel in your body, like looking at places that can be fun, Re research history. I know it's I had a client once that was a history buff. And every time I reminded her, well, what era of history would you, have you not studied that you'd like to? She'd get all excited and completely forget the narcissist for a few minutes, right? And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for more of that for our brain to find new neural pathways for where to go when it when it is just sitting there idle, right? Instead of going into the loop of thinking about the toxic person. So, okay, number eight, I know we talked about this in the beginning, but block that narcissist everywhere. Remove pictures of them off your phone. If you can't throw them away, stick them in a file you will never look at and lock it. 
if they're physical pictures, lock them away in a box, throw them away, whatever you need to do. Get rid of reminders of them in your life. Get rid of the gifts they gave you. Get rid of the change your decoration in your house, redecorate a room, whatever you need to do. Make it your own. Get rid of them. So number nine, understand why you have the urge to contact this person. Understand the trauma bonding. So like I said, there's lots of videos out there on it that explain it very thoroughly. Um, and understanding the, why you have this urge can logically help you stop. It's like understanding why you have an urge to smoke a cigarette when you're trying to quit or have a drink if you're trying to quit alcohol and you're, you know, addicted to it. It's like, it is literally like breaking an addiction. If you understand the urge, you can resist it. You can fight through it a little easier. Okay. Keep number 10, keep your education on narcissism up so that you are allowing the triggers of the things that you learn. Okay, so you're going to learn stuff. It's going to trigger you. You're going to learn things and you're going to hear things. You're going to hear other people's stories. You're going to and it's going to trigger you. Allow those triggers because they're truths. They're truths. As you're learning and educating yourself, it can be really difficult. You don't want to look in the face of it. Okay? People look all every which way as they're learning and they don't want to. So, look at it see it for what it is. And again, accept it. Oh, and I wish you all the best. I know that if you're watching this and watched it all the way through, that you're in something, right? And this isn't an easy time for you. So take care, be good to yourself, find the support you need. Um, keep watching the videos, keep, um, keep working on your life, not theirs. Let them go. Okay. These are toxic people that have hooked you unhook it. I am Lise Colucci and I'm one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com. If you need any help with anything related to narcissism and how it affects your life, head over to queenbeing.com. Lots of info over there.